Finally, 30 hours of editing. We have the new show. We have the opener, the animated opener. We have the new products from that other balloon company. We have the line dancing cowboys and the new theme song by Alanis Morissette. It's very ironic. Everything on this thumb drive right here. <sighs> it slides in and out yeah, like this. I see that, but be careful with it. I mean, we worked so hard on Woo! it. Oh, I'm gonna be gosh. careful. See? Don't lose it. We Sorry, worked I used too to be a hard on that for you to get Here, you catch it. Really? Really? Well, let's just throw together some clips. And... Yeah, just throw together something. <laughs> would have been nice. It would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to our April episode of the Balloon Blast video show. He's Scott Tripp. He is still Sam for me. Still. And we got a great show ahead for you guys. We got some special guests stopping by. We got some footage from the Twist and Shout 2016 in Dallas, Texas. We got a new product spotlight. We have uh, possibly an interview. We do have an interview. We do. You know, a lot of stuff happened I since know. last time. We've, we've had a, lot, a whole lot going on since the last episode. Well, let's get right down to it. And uh, before we go any farther, I want to show you something new from the Batalic Balloon Company. They're Batalitex 11-inch round oh. speech bubble balloons. That's right. It's a black balloon with a white speech bubble that you can sharpie anything on it. In fact, Scott is giving away the cinematic spoiler of the season with his... And just to throw everyone off, I did that in your handwriting. Cool. In fact, I have one here that's already made in your handwriting. Awesome. Wait, what's it say? Oh, you'll see when you watch the episode. Okay. Oh, do you have uh, any others? Yes, yes we do. We have this one for Scott. He dances for money. Well, these uh, people already know that about me. But do they know that you, whatever this is... I don't know what it says. I don't either. It's a mystery for all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. This uh, one sums up Scott more than anything I've ever seen. Sneak attack. Oh, I can only imagine. He is not qualified for a real <laughs> job. Uh, and you're pregnant, finally, LOL. I'm pregnant, LOL. Oh, man. And finally, a mime. Ugh. It's, it's almost, true. I mean, it's almost as bad as jugglers. Oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> anyway, those are a brand new product from our friends over at Metallitex Balloons. Um, I've been using them to great success on hair bands lately. Um, if you work in a situation where you can, you know, just put something funny on a balloon hair band, uh, similar to if you guys have ever been to a Dick's Last Resort restaurant, but we're family friendly here, so we wouldn't do all that. Sure. Well, sure. Yeah. Or take it, take a clue from the internet. If you can't come up with something funny, make a hashtag. That's right. right. <laughs> so we're actually turning balloon twisting into memes. Is that what we're? That's what we're doing. Do? Yes. Yes. You make people into live action memes. That's the way of the future. And these come in a bag of fifty from a Batalitex. Yeah, check with your local so your, or your favorite supplier rather to see if they have them in stock. I recommend just using yours. It works out for me. It's a lot yeah. cheaper to use your balloon. So I'm uh, happy with it. So, anyway, in three, two, one. It's full of oh, breath. my gosh. This is why we can't have nice oh. things. Well, on that note, <laughs> let's get on with the show. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Myself, Dustin Query, and Purple Pig. Just got done lecturing over in Scott Tripp's area. 
uh, Connie Eidelman, Sam Kermines, and some other great people were here. We had a blast. Thank you very much for having us. And Scott wants to make sure that if we die on the road down in New Orleans, that at least we have our legacy by showing at least one more balloon sculpture, as if they didn't see enough of our crap. So, anywho, we got to make one more. That's a clue as to what we're making. So, for this one, we're going to need a blue 350, white 160, yellow 5 inch round, and a black 260. So it's going to be a little bracelet that I use quite often. Now blow up black, about a foot and a half. Let me pinch this. Go down about four or five inches. Two pitch twists. And go back. If you're familiar with Don Cottle's brick wearables, it's pretty much the same thing. Don't mind that. Now, of the yellow round, about three inches. Blue 350, about three, four inches. Tie it off, and you're gonna make a two inch twist. And you're gonna push that back in. Wrap it in there. The white 160. Just a few inches. Just basically, you're just making bubbles going from one to the other. You're going to make like a little ghost shape. Hi! Hey, how you doing, Danny? I'm great, thank you. <laughs> what have you got here? Oh, well, we have the new Mac Caddy. Um, it's a balloon holder for the, the Mini oh, Mac Lite. Uh, comes with a hub, it's modular. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, we have uh, the center hub, which attaches to your pump. And then you can uh, add the, the module. Please just, I have a, a snippet that, that, that goes to it. Uh, we also have a, uh, a balloon holder, uh, which, you know, you, get, you have people that want to be able to uh, inflate balloons, pre-inflate them, and, and stick them on the pump, and, and we just now have a way to do that. And it comes in, uh, it has, it's configurable, You can. it comes with three different modules. That um, is so cool. Isn't it? I love it. And what's this bit here? Um, this is, uh, I use uh, balloon straws, so I, I made something, that I'm going to have Ken shoot, uh, make a bag that fits inside of it, so it can hold... Uh, balloon straws or scraps or be a tip bag for you, a garbage can, whatever you need to comply with the gig. Um, and, you know, if you don't want the balloon holder, you're not a fan of the balloon holder, but you do use straws, you can just take that off and you have whatever way you want to go. It is. It's awesome. awesome. It's awesome. Uh, and it, it's the new product for t uh, 2016 for Mac Pump Entertainment. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Does it get any better? Yes, it does. Watch this.
Welcome back! And happy Star Wars month. Right. If you're buying Star Wars Holiday Life Day. Life Day. Yeah, Life, Life Day, day presents day. for all your Star Wars geek fans out yeah, there. Yeah, we don't admit to there ever being a thing called Life Day. But anyway, <laughs> what have you got for us today, Scott? I just have a bunch of different balloons. Some new, some not so new. I just want to play with them, get them out here, and let some of you guys who may not seen some of these balloons know about these balloons. All right. <laughs> yes, all that. We got these Proloon balloons. They're Apple Body or Bee Body balloons, 321s. But there's colors. something odd about them. They have different colored tips than we're used to seeing. Right. They're, uh, they kind of have that Qualitex feel, but apparently they're not Qualitex. Wow. Okay, cool. I played with a few of them. I'm just going to blow them up, see if there is, uh, Durable. Okay. So where'd you get them? Uh, I actually bought these off eBay. There's a okay. magic shop. Um, off the top of my head, I believe they were somewhere in that Las Vegas area. Okay. Um, we'll put a link in here, though, because I didn't do my prep work. I'm counting on myself to do my homework after. Put it yeah. in the they do have a good durable feel to them. Uh, the I really, Taiwanese yeah, made. I thought they'd have more of a plasticky feel, but yeah, they have a nice rubbery feel. And the different color combinations are... Golden Delicious Apple. Uh, Non-Golden Delicious Apple. That's a Granny Smith ah, yeah, yeah, with a worm. Right. It's, oh, yeah. you have worms. Your Granny oh. Smith has worms. <laughs> More no. stuff. More Bam. stuff. Bam. Bam. What are these? These are metallic assortment from Metallitex. And if you're watching at home, say metallic, Metallitex five times real fast. Metallic, Metallitex, Metallic, Metallitex. It's a short show. Metallic, Metallitex. All right. <laughs> Metallitex. You take that. I'll take this. Okay. Oh, you picked Yowler. Yep. I'll do a good, no, 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 I want purple. Okay, so when you blow these up, you want to go from the tip end, stretch down to the other end. If you want to put a stretch on these, don't be like Sam. Don't mouth inflate them. Because Whew. these are not your typical balloon. They don't have that, um, you know how sometimes a balloon pops has that little sizzle yeah. kind of sound, it's slowly. These don't do these that. Don't. These, these suffer the same brittle nature that your, uh, 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 yeah. Qualitex metallic soil. Well, any metallic balloon. Yeah. To get the metallic look, they had a uh, some sort of agent to the liquid latex, be it crushed aluminum or you know whatever it is that gives it that metallic sheen. So it waters the latex down a little bit more. So you have to uh, you know twist a little. Say, ah, oh, oh, this one already for, made for you. Look. Oh. See, there's the muzzle end. Oh, okay. Well, there's that. <coughs> Yeah. Of course, I would have left a little more room. Um, Not me, so. What were we saying about them? Oh, yeah, when they pop, they tend to explode spectacularly. They make a loud sound, and sometimes they will hit you in the face, and uh, they kind of shred apart, too. Yes. So. All right, so but we're making... if you're But if you're needing something that's just a little bit different, uh, they use stuff, uh, different colors inside them. I know that using the silver metallic with the black inside makes great chrome for motorcycle build. Um, the red, the greens, the uh, blues on that would make awesome uh, lightsaber blades. And this is just the assortment. Um, yeah. Some assortments are different because I've noticed there's a lime green and a standard green in some bags. Right. This one had no lime green. Yeah. Um, they sell them separately as well. And I got metallic burgundy. I like to mix a weird color in every order. Well, a couple Ooh. of different colors I'll rotate in and out. Um, I was really excited about this color. Oh. Yes. But, here's the problem. The shelf life on these balloons, they don't turn over as fast, so... Right. It's kind of that old balloon smell. You see what I'm talking about? A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this one I can put a few twists in, but, um... You want to give it a shot? But it's a very, very pretty color, and yeah, I can see... carefully. ...different uh, decor elements. Right, I've actually stuffed that inside a, uh, a pearl, um... What is the azure blue? Yeah. And it looks pretty neat, but, um... You know, you're putting a metallic inside of pearl, so you have to really gingerly handle it. What do you think? I think it's a wonderful, wonderful color if you're doing some decor elements for a winery. Sure. Oh, it, yeah, absolutely. See? Burgundy. Wow. Yeah, but, um, see what I did there? Ah, yeah. but like if you order a bag of, like, say, Mandarin Orange 260s. Anything that's kind of a seldom used color, you know it's sitting on the shelves a little bit longer, so, right. you know, buyer beware. What else do we have? Oh! Neons! Yeah. And now, why do we have Batelitex instead of uh, Qualitex here? Oh, okay, because the Qualitex uh, neon assortment doesn't have yellow anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, they discontinued yellow, which yeah. is weird. It seems like an important color. Um, now, now, in the Qualitex, these are the ones I usually use for lightsaber blades. 
Okay. And I'll, I'll still buy the Qualitex, and sometimes I'll get a bag of Vitalitex Yellow and mix in with there. Just to uh, make sure I have the full color spectrum. Because you gotta have yellow too. Right. So, oh! So you use a lot of these neons? Do you have I use a, a few. Do you rotate them in for any special purposes, or just whenever you want something different? Whenever I want something a little bit different, a little All bit right. shiny. Talk about these. These, I remember seeing these at Twist and Shout last year. These were unveiled at Twist and Shout 2015. These are the metallic polka dot 260s. So pretty. We actually broke the story on the uh, the zebra and what was the other print? The tiger. Tiger, and then there's and also some others that came out yeah. after. This. And I have been waiting years to get these in. Um, they've been available in different countries and. Finally, they're and available they here. Brought them to us. Woo! They done messed up now, huh? Yep. All right. Look, another one. Oh, why are you blowing up all these balloons? To make your standard rainbow? Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to put that over there. Wait, did you not show up for rehearsals today? I did not. Oh, okay. We had rehearsals. That's new. Well, see, that's the problem. We have after parties? Oh, I wasn't supposed to oh, tell you. Man. Oh, sorry about that. So I used to not really know the, the order of the colors of the rainbow. I got tired of eight-year-old girls correcting me. Yeah. That's not right, balloon guy. It's red, orange, yellow, green, blue. So um, I never make that mistake anymore. There's only so many times you want to be corrected by the experts, you know? Yes. Like if you make a dolphin and the tail goes the wrong way. That's not right because the dolphin is a mammal, not a blah blah blah. So um, so now I know the correct answer is five because that's how many fit in a braided uh, two sixty. Looking good. I don't know what sense of polka dot rainbow makes, but it's pretty. It is pretty. Now the thing about the polka dot prints, of course, is. They're printed in the middle, because when they make these, they have to blow up the balloon, they uh, silk screen the print on both sides, and then uninflate it. And that's really a large print area, so um, it would be hard to print the whole balloon. So you have to kind of fudge around with it a little bit sometimes. Make sure the prints are all in there. In fact, like this blue, you can see the polka dot starts here. So if I was making that into a rainbow, maybe we pull that down and up here, so the polka dots are all in the middle. And I've tried making these with other th Oh, there's a fuchsia! Sorry, I got a little Oprah on that one. You totally <laughs> did. But the thing with uh, the polka dots, the way they are, they're on like the top and the bottom, not the sides. So if you're making something that has a twist to it, it kind of, uh, actually that looks good. <laughs> but sometimes it'll not line up right. So if you make like say flower petals, you want to always orient those to the outside. And that would be a really good color for uh, like making a mini mouse like the boner hair. So um, I don't know, I kind of like the polka dots. What else do we have? Oh, voila! Coral! Oh, I've been extolling the virtues of these repeatedly. You use a lot of those? Like, I do, and here's why. Because <laughs> the hot fashion color amongst young ladies this last summer has been Coral and with teal? a Caribbean teal blue. Yeah, like the the chevron powder. Yes. Why? It's a great it's color combination. Color, huh? It's very subdued. I guess every era kind of has its certain colors. I, 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 it can look elegant and relaxed. Yeah, we were talking. Uh, I was talking about parents. We were looking at old photos, and they they were telling me about how like everything in our house at one point was harvest gold. They're like, you know, that era everything's avocado and harvest gold. You know, so every different... You're making that face. No, I just remember avocado and harvest gold. Right, so like every different era has certain hot colors, and this apparently is right now. Yep. Now this is also coral. This is the Patelotex coral. It can pass for red in some uh, it scenarios. It looks more red to me than... Now if I had a Patelotex red here, I would show you that yeah, the that red is a little bit... totally different. Actually, yeah, well, actually you have one right there. It's a, it's a reddier red. Yeah. So, honestly, I keep all three of these. I keep uh, usually a Qualitex and a Batelitex red, uh, Batelitex and a Qualitex coral, and just use them all. Normally my uh, balloon bag is full, I have 52 different colors, because they make them, why not have them? Um, 
What else do we have? Is that enough? I think that's it. All right, so um, recommendations. Recommendations. These are great, but expensive. Those are very expensive. They come in um, a bag of 50 for about 10 bucks, so um, maybe don't make rainbows with them. No. <laughs> uh, unless you're in a party right. where you're getting paid very well, or you know, you'll get good tips. Or, or if you're doing decor elements where that would be handy, and you know the markup on decor is amazing. So. Right. Well, you know why I have this bag? Whenever I order, I get what I need, and then I want like a little treat for myself. It's like going to Starbucks, you yeah. know, it's like something to spoil myself. So I get this, and I'll throw in another color or two just to try out, to have something fun. Um, Curl 260s by Qualitex. Thumbs up. I use them all the time. Batellatex, I use too. Have I love that color. I have not used the Batellatex. I love that color. I'm though. down for both of those. Yep. Neons. neons. I use neons like crazy. I do too, and I really can't extol uh, one company over the other. I like them both. I use them both. They're both um, they both have slight differentiations in the colors, but um, um, they're both great. I, I use them both. Right. And I guess just assortments. Unless I'm getting the yellow to fortify the other right, one. Right, 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 right. Because... I don't have enough needs for, you know, neon blue to buy a right, bag right. of those. Um, and the metallic. You metallic, use I use metallics quite a bit. I get one assortment bag per order, and just, it lasts me about an order. So, right. um, it's right. not something I rotate out a lot, but I kind of want it in the bag. It's like a... Right, right, right. I get them, uh, if I'm, especially if I'm doing, like, a motorcycle build. Mm -hmm. And see, I don't have them for any special reason. I just have them because if I have someone and they don't know what color they want, it's fun just to, you know, random color. Here, mm -hmm. metallic green. Um, and the last. And those. I'm very impressed with those. Those, uh, um, really, they're, they're from a company I've never heard of. Right. They're, Which they're, Now, that does mean, though, the color matching's a bit off. The color matching like is that off. That orange is a little odd, but, and that red may not match. But, I mean, if you're using these for different elements for different things, the... Uh, yeah, the so, color combinations are going to be off, but you can make it work. That's what we do. Right. I made a, a skateboard Monday with these for the wheels. Yeah. They were all four different color wheels. Kind of mid-80s kind of color scheme. Right. So I would say this fits, for me, into the, the treat category. I right. like them. They're fun to play with. Practicality, I don't know how much I'm going to use them. I don't make apples at work. Right, right, right. So right. Um, I will buy these. I will play with them. Um, I would say... For, uh, just for fun, buy a bag, play with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or two. So, three quarters of thumb up. Um, thumbs up for hobby and fun purposes, maybe thumbs down for work purposes. Or uh, thumbs flat for, th for work purposes. Yeah. I mean, we, we can always find find a use for anything we buy, of course. All right. Um, I would say an assortment of fingers facing all different directions. And there we go. All awesome. Right. That's so enough stuff. That's enough stuff. Yeah. And um, let's take a look at this message from one of our sponsors. That was great. Now, here's this. Man, Purple Pig. <laughs> Check out the centerfold. Man, this month's issue, <laughs> it's Scott Tripp's mom. Man! <laughs> just... Oh, <laughs> hey everyone, sorry, just catching up on some balloon magic here. Um, Christopher Lyle, also known as the guy in the yellow suit, coming to you from my thinking room. It's where I do most of my research. And I'd like to thank both Scott and Sam for allowing me to share a design with you. Uh, I apologize for the venue, but my schedule's pretty busy, so I have to try to fit this in where I can. Um, so tonight, I'm going to be sharing with you a creepy, pixelated video game character. And for this design, you are going to need a buttload of lime green 260s. So let's jump into it. So 
line version first is going to use two 260s. You want to inflate them each to about a hand's width. And then tie them together like such. Purple pig. Oh, good boy. All right. So, tie them together. Give them a good little stretch. And we're going to start by putting two loop twists, each one about a hand's width, approximately, in each balloon. together and now we're going to spiral these all the way up just like this and now we're going to put um, two pinch twists and the way that I do that is I'm just going to come over about the hands with because I really want these to be juicy solid pinch twists so we'll say about a Two inch bubble, two to two and a half inches approximately, like this. Right here. And now I'm going to grab these and twist them together. And now I'm going to make two more pinch twists the exact same way. Pop off an excess, hiding all my scrappy bits inside of those pinch twists. So that gives me uh, <laughs> this inappropriate looking uh, design. But uh, I do need to give a quick shout out uh, to Continental Sales because thanks to Lorinda for uh, coming up with these um, creepy uh, prints in her private reserve, thanks to me, uh, we can now do this without having to draw all of that silliness on the balloon. So we just tie that in. And that is a quick little creeper. Now, uh, for line work, this works perfect. However, when you have more time, like in a restaurant or a birthday party, I would recommend doing this version. This is how I make my normal creeper. And we're going to start with a lime green 260. Give it a stretch. You want to leave about a hand's width. <clears throat> Ooh, pardon me, a hand's width. And we are going to start with a one inch pinch twist. Followed by a hand's width bubble. And another one inch pinch twist. Followed by a hand with bubble. And another mm -hmm, one inch pinch twist. Like so. Another hand with bubble. And a one inch pinch twist. And finally, a hand with bubble. And then connect it back to that first pinch twist. So we end up with basically a square and we're going to create a cube. So I'm going to continue on, hands with bubble, one inch pinch twist, hands with bubble and because I'm getting a little tight at the ends here, 
I'm going to kill that. A little too much, but that's okay. I can just tie that off around that pin twist, like so. And then I will grab another lime green 260Q. And I'm actually going to tie that off onto the other one. That way I only have to tie one knot instead of two. And then I will continue. A hands with bubble. A one inch bench twist. And then another hands with bubble. And I'm going to lock that right back in to the bench twist. So now I have a figure eight design. Basically, like so. But I'm going to move that up to give me this configuration. Tie in and continue. With another hands with bubble and a pinch twist, a hand with bubble, and I will lock back into that pinch twist right up here. And I will tie that in. Make sure it does not come unraveled. We're almost done with the cube. One more 260Q should do it. Pick your favorite pinch twist. Lock and load. And we'll do another hands with bubble. Pinch twist. Hands with bubble. Tie into that pinch twist. and I'm just going to make one little uh, cross section there to finish me off. And the bubble. And there we have the head. The cube. Like so. Now, what you will need is a lime green uh, round, five inch round balloon. Stay. And uh, all that mess I said uh, about there being a Minecraft print, I'll, I was just full of, um, well, figure that out. Uh, sadly, in 2016, we have yet to have Minecraft uh, prints, but hopefully, when you're watching this in the future, they will exist. Just remember, the balloon artists of today had to suffer so you could be free. That's right. Um, one five inch lime green round, and I'm gonna inflate this inside of the cube, which is a little tricky. I'm gonna place the balloon inside, and I'm going to inflate it so it will completely fill up the inside of that box. your nozzle is uh, centered coming out of the bottom. You don't really want to over inflate it. You don't want this to push out the cube that you just made distorting the 260s. Uh, next, put this aside and you need to make this. This is a two balloon flat weave. I assume that if you're watching the Balloon Blast video show that you probably are already familiar with how to make this so I'm not going to teach it to you. Um, now what I've done here is uh, my flat weave um, is approximately uh, made with about two and a half inch bubbles, so it's very thin and narrow. 
Um, and then I've taken an uninflated 260 and I've threaded it through all the way down inside of that flat weave. That's going to give me an attachment point to the cube. The good news is we are almost done. I'm just going to tie that off. And then for extra stability, I'm going to take this in, tie it around that pinch twist. This in, tie it around that pinch twist. You can cut off what's left or just hide it inside of your flat weave, whichever you prefer. And then you can take the bottom and if you pull it nice and tight, that's going to make that really snug up at the top. Put that aside and you're going to get four five inch rounds and make a quad. About the same size. Yes. Tie those into each other. Rinse and repeat. We're almost done, Purple Pig. Yes, we are. <laughs> are about the same size. Take this quad, lock it together, like so. And now take your top structure, take this, and you will tie it in nice and securely to the base. And then all you need is artwork. Now, with that being said, instead of doing this, whee, the way I have been making this lately is I will take this structure. Now, this structure is a geo distortion taught by Matt Falloon. Uh, and you can pick this up on his Flower Buds download, available at balloon-animals.com. Not going to teach you how to make this. Um, you'll have to check Matt's download out for that. Uh, the uh, quad four rounds uh, locked together make a perfect base for this. But this looks better, in my opinion. So, I will take this and we'll, whoop, we'll lock that in. several times. I'm going to go around one pinch twist here, and one pinch twist on the other side. So that is nice and secure. Straighten that up. I should also mention that if you purchase Matt's flower bud designs uh, from balloon-animals.com, you will also receive my ice cream cone design and my tank design based on his concept. Tank is really cool. I really love my ice cream cone. <laughs> ice cream, you scream, the police show up, it's awkward. <clears throat> so, artwork. Last little step. In one of these pockets here. Aha! Kirby. And as we all know, the creeper has a simple face, very pixelated. If you don't know how to make a creeper face, just Google it. Even the most inept artist, such as myself, should have no trouble creating a passable creeper face. Is my um, my take 
on the Minecraft Creeper. I call it the Creeper in the Crapper. What's that, Purple Pig? An interview with Dustin Gwery and Ryan LaValley? Roll it! Having said, hopefully the audio works. We've got this great background music. It's wonderful. Oh man, I, I've never felt so country in my life. <laughs> in Virginia. Uh, I, I am now in Tennessee. Hello, everybody. Ryan the Valley. I have been spending the past several days with this guy right here. Actually, one of my best friends, Dustin Query. Hello. So, Dustin, how's, how you doing? Fantastic. I can't wait to get ready to. <laughs> Likewise, my friend. So, so we have done a small lecture tour. Uh, we hit up Richmond, Virginia, South Carolina, a place there. And now we're in Nashville, we're in, Tennessee. Now we are in Nashville, Tennessee. I can almost say the word. I'm working on it. And we're on our way down to New Orleans. We are now officially done with our lecture tour. Uh, we had a blast. We got to meet some great people. I finally got to meet some people in person. I had never met Sam Kameens, but I've been a big fan of his. He's the, the Bloom Black video show, I think we. We've been uh, twisting for a long time now, and you were we twisted together at convention several times. It's really because of you and John Reed, I was able to piggyback to your classes and get my own teaching spot from there. And... I know, thank you. I, I love writing your cookies. So. <laughs> but now I'm fully formed. I, I'm sure that there's plenty of rough agents from my own teaching experience. I, I would love positive or any kind of feedback from people that actually saw the, the lectures that I've done. Hopefully, did you learn anything new while being on tour? Uh, Besides things about me. Because <laughs> there's a lot of things that I did not know. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't think we've like spent that much time together, you know. Usually it's at convention, so we're hanging out I, with all the old friends and stuff. I think you've convinced me to use those little hair clips, uh, headbands. Uh, Another convention. There, he has got a ton of great designs. Um, me personally, I don't really use that stuff too often. I'm a pretty uh, purist 260 guy. It's almost all I use, but. Saw some really good stuff this week working with him, and I think I might give it a try. Don't hold me to it. <laughs> swear, swear by purple pig that you will at least try. I'll at least try. <laughs> You're married to a face painter. I am. Do you Actually, work together? Can, um, we don't work together as much as I would like. The um, thing is, she's the best face painter in my area. I'm the best balloon twister. I can say that without bragging. Um, when we first started dating, we both had our individual businesses set up. So sometimes when they've already hired me and they've already hired a face painter, but if they ever suggest, hey, we're thinking about a face painter, it's just a no-brainer telling them I happen to know the best. And most of the time I don't tell them that it's my wife because I don't want them to know that how biased I am. <laughs> but once they were actually at the party, everybody's raving about how good she is. We'll let it slip. Oh yeah, that's my husband, or that's my wife. You know, isn't she awesome? So, so you uh, split business, booking, advertising, or we we do our own separate thing. We have our own separate businesses. It's because we have very different business styles, so it's it works better that way. I I'm kind of particular about it. So <laughs> I know you do balloons and reptile shows, and what is your your core um, audience, your target group? Uh, school age children mostly. Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> Pigs are not reptiles. Uh, it's purple. Uh, it's speckled. What? <laughs> well, uh, right now I'd say about eighty percent of my income is still from balloons primarily. I also do the exotic animal shows, still walking, and a little bit of magic, even face painting and character art sometimes. But. Um, <laughs> guy. Anyway, um, <laughs> a few more so, days, man. You can hang in there. We'll go our separate ways for at least a month. Uh, so, so we're teaching again. Uh, so I've tried my best to try to combine uh, the school show that I do with the animals along with the balloons to make it a uh, more exciting, unique experience for schools. And it's not just a balloon guy or a snake guy coming in and sharing stuff with them. So each time I do a show now with the animals, I try to end with a big balloon sculpture too, so it sets the wheels in motion for 
something later on. Well, also, I remember, uh, you know, the whole time. It's a commercial break. Yeah. Wait until the music. Because you can ignore music that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there'll be a lot of chopping. <laughs> Remixing. Yeah. So anyone who does balloon animals knows that if you do balloons at a party, you'll hear, you're the best balloon person I've ever heard. Shucks. So. You don't mean that? So now that, yes, you. <laughs> so that being said, that the audience is becoming more sophisticated. Do you feel like you have to step your game up? For me, that's something I've always struggled with because the more you hear it, the less meaningful it is. You know, like you feel like when you hear it every time, it just doesn't carry the same weight anymore. So. I'm actually coming to the point where I'm a little burned out, and that's also why I'm turning more to the reptile shows and doing that stuff. Give myself a little break so I can come back into it full-hearted and happy about doing it again. So, yeah. Do you think that, I mean, obviously you're really good, but do you think that they're just kind of saying it to be polite? Um, you know, I, I don't really usually feel that way. Cause most of the time, it's, it's really sincere. Like, people are genuinely uh, excited and happy about what you do, and they always want to see more, especially when you start telling them about the large sculptures or bigger projects that you've done. Like, recently, uh, I worked on the, uh, the Guinness record-breaking sculpture that uh, Brian Getz led, and uh, every time I show people pictures of that, they get really excited about it want to know more, and, uh, so it leads into showing them my whole portfolio. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be nothing usable. Huh? Thanks for having us. Hey, Bye. I hope that you can actually use any of that material, but good luck. <laughs> well, guys, that's it. That brought us to the end of another episode of the Balloon Blast video show. We hope you guys enjoy it as much as we enjoy bringing it to you. Scott, do you have anything to add? Oh, all that stuff about patreon.com forward slash purple pig supporting the oh, show. Oh, that stuff, And yes. the other stuff about all our downloads at balloon-animals.com. And maybe uh, right to the show. You know, it's very lonely here without contact with other humans. So you can reach us at Balloon Blast Video Show at gmail.com. And we hardly ever check that. So. Oh, buy these two. They're pretty fun. Oh, yes, buy those. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching. Till next episode, you guys have a great one. We do that. You and I in a little toy shop buy a bag of balloons with the money we've got. Set them free at the break of dawn. So one by one, they were gone. Back at the base, sparks in the software. Flash the message, someone's out there. Floating in the summer sky. 99 red balloons go by. We left these out of the new products. I know we're a little late for the Super Bowl, but they came out with these really cool quick link football balloons. You can use these in all sorts of sculptures whenever you need a football and you don't want to draw the laces on. They also look a little bit nicer than if you draw them on with a marker. And check it out, you can make really cool garlands and decorations and stuff like that for everyone who likes watching the Super Bowl. Scott, what about people who don't like watching the Super Bowl? Oh, that's right, not everyone likes watching the Super Bowl. Puppy bowl! <laughs> uh, arf, arf.